Rodin also produces the burgers of Calais. If you look closely, you can see Wendy's and Burger King and McDonald's. And of course, Burger King is back here with his head covered because the Whopper is kind of disappointing these days. Moving on. What we have is a commemoration of a heroic episode in the Hundred Years' War. What has happened is we have six leading citizens who are offering their lives if the siege on their city is lifted. This is actually Calais. And the British forces have besieged the city. The French want to get out. Of course, during a siege, you basically keep everyone in the city until they starve to death. That is not good for anyone. So instead, these six leading men, basically the people in charge of the city, say, look, if you... You know, if we give our lives, if we come over to your side and you can do whatever you want with us, just free our city. And that's exactly what the British accept because, of course, they have their own mean, their own problems and they don't really want to take over Calais anyway. So we have this episode and what we see are these six men walking to their death. They're going to die. They know they're going to die. And we're seeing their reaction during that walk from the city's gates to the English forces. Now, to heighten the psychological impact of the figures, they are spaced out uh, as if they were wandering aimlessly or going through their own individual thought process as they move towards death. And we get very different reactions from each of them. They also stand at ground level to make them accessible to residents and provide more down-to-earth inspiration. So, it's a very interesting piece, but the French government originally had put it up on a high pedestal, away from the people. Why? I mean, why hide these faces, this expression? Well, think about it this way. We don't really want to think about our heroes having emotions. We want to think about them being heroic. We don't want to think about George Washington sitting uh, at Valley Forge crying because he's well aware that his troops and him and everyone else he knows are likely to die when the British beat him. Because that's what he's thinking at various times. He must be because, of course, the American forces are outmatched at various points during the war. But we don't want to think about that. We don't want to think about Lincoln losing sleep over the Civil War. We want to think of him as powerful, making all the right decisions. And so we have the same problem with the Burgers of Calais. This entire piece is about emotion, yet that's the one thing that we don't want to think about our heroes having. And as we look at these faces, we see different ways of going to one's death. This man seems wrought with anxieties, with uh, fear. This man seems just sad and depressed. This man on the left, very stoic, knowing what he's doing, knowing what he has to do. And the one on the right, you can see him trying to hold it together, looking stoic, but in reality, we can read that face and say, no, he's not really being stoic. He's putting on a brave face. And so Rodin has captured something very, very different. He has captured the emotion of the moment. Because of works like Walking Man, Rodin inspired an interest in incomplete works. And even this has elements and passages that would seem incomplete. We see that use of texture that seems a little incomplete, a little unfinished, but yet it captures the mood so perfectly. He uses the texture to give us a sense of the emotion that the people are feeling. Something very, very difficult because emotions tend to be very small things. You do not walk into your dorm room after a rough day, throw down your backpack and pout. You don't go, hmm, and your roommate goes, huh, it looks like you're sad. You don't do that because you're not three. Instead, as an adult, you sit there and maybe you hunch your shoulders a little bit. Maybe you look down at the floor a little bit more, but it tends to be much more subtle. And so that's what Rodin is working with. He's trying to take these very subtle elements of emotion, these micro expressions that show upon our face, and he's trying to amplify it and he's using texture to do it. So it's really an inspirational piece. Now, his ability to capture a moment 
and emotion, as well as recreating highly textured surfaces while revealing these deep themes, was also going to be inspirational in the 20th century. 